Hey guys, good morning. I'm going to record a message here before uh, online fellowship. And if you ever want to join us, guys, we get together at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Mountain, uh, which is noon and 8 p.m. Eastern at uh, freedomministries.live. Just go straight to that website, freedomministries.live, and the password's freedom. And uh, that's where we make ourselves available and uh, you know, to help people with prayer, answer questions, go through some scriptures, whatever, whatever it is. So anyway, um, I just wanted to record a message called uh, really from the book, happiness is free again, and uh, share with you some really fascinating things, but uh, every atom in the universe moves to fulfill your thought. And uh, what he says here, which is so fascinating, he says, <clears throat> actually everything and everyone moves to serve you, what you do with the inner man. When you are in tune and you have a thought, every atom in the universe moves to fulfill your thought. That's the true you guys. That's the true nature. We have the spirit of God within us. And that spirit of God is eternal. It's been here. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So that means it knows the answer to everything. It has the power to do anything. The spirit of God is not limited. We would, we would think that God, um, most people would agree that God can do anything. Well, they haven't equated the fact that the spirit's in you. And that's what scripture is really talking about is, uh, all of the scriptures do not talk about anything negative about man at all. It's all about the two love covenants, the creative ability of God and man. And I'll show you that. We'll go through some more things. <laughs> we may show you some shocking things. That is literally uh, from Genesis 1. I'll show you John 1 or virtually the same thing. Uh, and uh, it's talking about two abilities to create. One, this life, and the other, the seed of man to create uh, um, our physical being and then the the ability to spiritually create from within and so uh that's the better way and it, it literally is unlimited you can do anything and we say all these things i'm just going to share some things that uh that i've sh i've shared with you over and over and over but i want people to get their true identity their true identity is limitless their true identity is one with god the nature of of god that will be forever is i am that i am and uh that spirit of god is limitless but everything that we believe about ourselves that places limits on us is, is really not the true you. It's not, not who you are. And so trying to be confined or say that God only works if you do these things, if you believe that, that becomes real to you. And uh, it's really trying to bring you to your true identity, which is I am truly free. And uh, uh, there are no limits to anything I can do, can have. Everything you desire is available right now, right where you are simply by seeing how you desire it to be from within and knowing that is the unlimited power of God. So I'm going to share a couple things with you. Um, just if they're see if they're saying all the same thing, and then I'll go through scripture to show you that that's saying the exact same thing. But uh, one of my, my favorites is um, from Bob Proctor, and he says, man's chief delusion is to think that the causation of life is outside of you. The economy, the spouse, uh, um, the politicians, the country, <laughs> no the the kingdom of god is within the power of god's within you so if there's anything you don't like simply change your thought simply change what you do within how you see yourself and perceive the world within and that'll bring it to be it's really not more difficult than that so uh here's a great one from from uh joe Dispenza, which i love he says people believe we have to drag our body through space and time to get what we want this is the lie of separation, meaning that we're separate from everything. Well, if the Spirit of God owns everything, has everything, knows everything, knows the answer to everything, has been around forever and it will be forever, um, everything's available. And so that's matter trying to change matter. That truth is that matter is surrounded by a quantum field of love. You can learn to create from the field what you do with your heart and mind will shape the matter. Instead of matter, when you get a picture of what you desire in your mind and the emotion is if you already have it, the joy, the gratitude, the peace of already having it. Well, if you really, truly believed who really knew who you were, guys, that you're the unlimited power of God, you're the container for the unlimited power of God. What you do within knows that the physical world is going to shape to bring that to pass. When you get a picture of what you desire in your mind and maintain the emotion as if you already have it, independent of any situation, fact, or time. See, most people, most people, the reason they have stress is they think about all the things they don't want to happen. And they go through this mental progression where they roll it over and over and over in their mind. Like, what if I don't have enough money? What if I don't have health? Um, what if this happens? What if the economy does this? What if the 
person does this, they don't realize they have the unlimited power of God within themselves to, to bend and shape it. They place limits on themselves. If the interest rates are X, then I will have whatever. I'm just giving an example. Independent of any situation factor time, you are a transducer. You collapse space and time. The event is drawn to you. You don't have to go anywhere to get it. So rich, guys. So rich. So I'm going to share one other thing. Um, and I've, this is uh, I've shared with you over and over and over. These are just some of my favorites. You know, it's uh, Dr. Greg Braden when he's talking about the um, the medicineless hospital. It's really fascinating. He says they know the language of prayer, <laughs> which is what I'm trying to teach people. So he says they didn't judge when, when somebody would come in, and this particular one is with um, I think it's bladder cancer. So they they didn't yell at the cancer. They didn't go, "This is of the devil," or "This is evil," or "This has to go." They simply saw, oh, that's not how we want it to be. So they simply felt the feeling of the of peace and joy of this person completely whole. And it says they knew they felt the feeling as if she was already fully healed, fully enabled. They knew that the field generated by your heart and mind, matter conforms to it. They felt the feeling of gratitude that something has already occurred, knowing that the physical absolutely, this is what I'm trying people to get, the physical absolutely must conform to the field they're creating with their hearts and minds. The material realm is bent and shaped by what you do with your heart and minds. So you don't yell at the thing, you go, um, uh, come into agreement that this happens. You don't do any of that strange stuff that people do. You simply see things how you would like to be as if it's already perfect, not please Lord intervene so it becomes perfect. No, everything is perfect. Thank you, Father, this is how it works. <sighs> you just enjoy as if it's already done, not worrying about it, not begging God, not, not uh, beating up the devil or any weird things that people do. The man's chief delusion is to think that the causation of life, what, why your life is what it is or why that person's life is what it is, comes from the outside. That's man's chief delusion. Everything comes from within. So that's that's interesting. Um, this is... Uh, I was sharing this the last couple of weeks too, but this is from the autobiography, autobiography of a yogi. Now, this is really interesting. This is, he talks about Dr. L.T. Trolland of Harvard. He's a, he says, optical images, optics, which is I in, guys. All, everything that was translated, no or not, in, in uh, the Latin and English Bibles is ooh or I in. And it's, it, it literally says, um, to perceive with the mind's eye. That's eye in or optic, Omicron in, in Greek. And so it says the optical images are built upon the same principle as ordinary halftone engravings. They are made up of minute dotties or striplings far too small to be detected by the eye. And he's talking about somebody, a yogi who's learned to go within. The sensitivities of your retina, this is how fearfully and wonderfully you're made, guys. The sensitivities of your retina are so great that a visual sensation can be produced by relatively few quanta or packets of the right kind of light. The, so he's talking about yogis. Yogis divine knowledge of light phenomena. Uh, because the yogis have divine knowledge of light phenomena that they can literally take the light atoms, what they perceive within in the mind's eye, and it bends and shapes and brings it into the physical forces is, is another way to say this. <clears throat> Through the yogi's divine knowledge of how of light phenomena, he can instantly project into perceptible manifestation light atoms. The actual form of the projection, whether it be a tree, medicine, human bodies, in conformance with the power of will and visualization. What do you just set your will? Here's what I want to happen. And I realize I can simply see the image as how I want it to be. Uh, and it becomes into being. And he says, <clears throat> uh the yogi, I would just say somebody who knows their true identity, Christ in you, <clears throat> the anointing of God in you. He says, you're simply using the creative will bestowed on you by your creator. You rearrange the light atoms of the universe to satisfy any sincere prayer. For this purpose, we're men in creation made that you should rise up as master, knowing your dominion over all creation. So here's what he says, the power of your will and visualization. Do you know that you're an unlimited child of God, that you have the spirit of God within you? And he says, any you can take anything and bring it into physical world by your will, what you desire. We could say it like that. And visualization, he says, you're taking the, the small quanta of light, the little packets of light, 
And when you visualize, you literally rearrange those light atoms <clears throat> and bring it into physical creation. <laughs> Happiness is free. And then let me go to scripture. He goes, when you are in tune, you, you actually realize that everything, and I say this all the time, the world is bent and shaped by the kingdom within you guys. Everybody's saying the same thing. When when you when we with the prayer team, we, we want prayer, we don't beg God. We simply see the desired outcome as if it's already real and enjoy it. So we're using our will. Here's what I what we desire to happen. Ah, and it feels so great that this is exactly what happens. Realizing that what we just did is the creative act of God and it rearranges the light atoms and comes into physical manifestation. So I love this. He says, you, you will actually realize that everyone moved to serve you. When you're in tune, when you have a thought, guys, where's the thoughts happen? That's that's the I in the Omicron translated as no or not in your scriptures, which is horrible because there's no negative in there. It's just that there was no perceived means and there was no man available. The man, guys, means you can plant the seed within yourself. And I'll show you that in a second. Everyone moves to serve you when you're in tune and you have a thought. Every atom in the universe moves to fulfill your thought. That is true. <clears throat> And I want to share this again because this is so rich. Repetition is the key to me because it basically it takes it. <clears throat> you start to get an understanding of it and and uh, you literally ch change your how your brain functions and believes is if you do it over and over and over, those are the new neural pathways. And that's what you begin to believe. And you just accept it as true. And it be, what used to be hard becomes very simple. So the, the question again of the interviewer with Lester was saying, well, she has to go do something. She, she has to go out and look for a job. She, she can't just sit down and wait. Here's his answer. I say all she had to do was let go and let God. Now, matter pushing matter works, guys. But does God have to push matter to do anything? When we pray for somebody to be healed, if we're invoking God, most people have a God outside of themselves, but let's just even use that as an example. If they're praying to this God outside of themselves and they're a sincere uh, Christian and they want to pray, they're asking God to intervene and change the material world or their situation. Are they not? That's exactly what they're doing. And so this God is within, but even if the, we use the, the wrong Christian perception of God's out there somewhere flying around <clears throat> and not within you, you're still asking him to do something. He doesn't need to push matter to push matter. We realize this God can simply change matter to fulfill the, des the prayer desire of prayer. So there's a higher way of, ma of matter pushing matter. Matter pushing matter works. It takes a long time. If you know who you are, I am, present tense, this is who I am. I already am abundant. Then the world bends and shapes and make, creates abundance for you. I already am divine health. Everything works to, out to my favor. Everything's already in order. You just walk around and joy is really the whole goal, realizing that uh, you have the kingdom of God within you. So he says, I say you don't have to do anything. If she would have locked herself in a chamber somewhere, the things would have come to her. Why? They have to. Because the kingdom's within and what you do within really bends and shapes. You don't sit down and wait. You don't do anything. <laughs> you let go of the sense of doership. Guys, if you're doing it, it's you trying to push matter to matter. A better way is to be. I already am this. And while now watch the kingdom of God, the spirit of God, the limitless power of the whole world, bring it into fashion. That's letting go and letting God. You just know that everything's already perfect. You experience perfection within you. That's knowing. <clears throat> and the slightest thought you have will come into being quickly. The slightest thought. There's no limitation on God, which is your self. Where is he? You and I are one with the Father. We're one with God. There's no limitation to God, which means there's no limit to us. Whatever you think will come into being if you let go, because you're, you're invoking infinite power. Are you not? You're invoking the kingdom of God. You're... You're invoking Christ in you. The hope of glory, the confident expectation of weightiness. This is who I am. <clears throat> God is your, you're invoking infinite power when you go, this is who I am and this is what I already have. It's infinite power. Nothing can stop it because God is your self. I, now I want to share this too. This is pretty cool. This is why I ask you in, in prayer, please don't tell me what's wrong or the problem. Because seeing a problem in the world, when you go, I have a problem, because you're already stuck. <laughs> so 
So people, I tell them a thousand times, they still tell this to me. It says, seeing in the problem in the world is trying to be limited. Meaning, if you identify with a problem, you're trying to be limited. You're going against your true nature, which is the spirit of God, which is limitless. It causes all kinds of crazy emotions, depression, everything else between our heart and mind. Because you're telling you're, you're an unlimited being. You're the, the most powerful creator in the world, one with God. And you're telling that heart, you're aware of this, this heart consciousness. And you're going, no, I have a problem. He goes, it's really hard to be limited. It's really hard to be something you're not. Seeing a problem in this world is trying to be limited. If you think you have a problem, you do. If you just accept that God is all and God is perfect, then that's that. You look at perfection and that's all you'll ever meet the rest of your life you you can't have problems unless you place them on yourselves man's chief delusion is to think that the causation of life is something outside of himself no when you go well the reason i have this is because x you've placed a limit on yourself the true power of you is limitlessness so all of these things are saying the same thing <clears throat> you simply what you do within the field you create with your with your mind will and emotions is literally what bends and shapes Every atom in the universe moves to fulfill that thought. That's the true identity. Now, does scripture say this? I'm going to show you a couple of things. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> well, let me do, let me do this. Let me go to Genesis one first, because that's the beginning. What does Genesis one start with, guys? In the beginning. Okay. What does John one start with? In the beginning. So let's go look at Genesis one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. If you go to interlinear, it doesn't say God. It says Elohims. So in the beginning, how we would say it in English, because we have noun, subject, verb, predicate, typically. So Elohims created from the beginning. You and I, gods, this is plural. If you go look it up, Elohims, Eloah. Yeah, the Yad Mem on the end of any noun in, in Hebrew makes it plural. It says Elohims created in the beginning, a left tof. The left top is the strength of the ox physically and spiritually, the seed of the, the, the seed of God that carries the unlimited power of God, both physically, this life, and the spiritually, in the holiest of holies, within the mind of men, of two joined together, the covenant. <clears throat> now, I've shown you this. It doesn't show up once in your English Latin Bible, yet it's used 11,050 times. Now, you can't tell me the very core, the very center of, the, of Genesis 1, what the Bible is all about, is never translated in Latin and English. That, that's not a problem, because <laughs> it is a problem. And people always ask me, why don't they do it? You got me, guys, because you ask any Hebrew, they can tell you what a left top is. In, in Strong's, it says untranslatable. Well, that, that's just silliness. Of course, it's translatable. It's how everybody creates. Elohim's created from the beginning by the seed physically and the seed spiritually. That's it. All right. So, in the, and then you create spiritually and the left top. So, Vav at the beginning is and the left top on earth. You create spiritually covenant and you have a covenant uh, on earth. That's Genesis 1. All right. So, John 1. In the beginning, same thing was the word, Dabar. It's, it's to the what enters into the doorway that carries the nature of the Father. And this, this is God, and the word was with God. He was with God in the beginning. Now, here's what I want to show you, just like a left off. Through him, all things were made, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, and darkness has not overcome it. <clears throat> there, there came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. All right. So far, except that's not what it says. Look at all these. Through him. Everything comes into being. Except it doesn't say him. It says autus. Now, this is autus. This is just like a left top, guys. Now, check this out. We were talking about this at Fellowship at the house last night. It is used 5,606 times. That's a lot because the what we call the New Testament um, is not nearly as long. So as, as the Old Testament, the books, the writings... And uh, but what what does autus mean? Self, emphatic guys. This emphasizes self, and it literally is autus. So you've got the upsilon, which is vav, which is man, a left tof. So you've got the strength of the ox of the, 
of the finished work of the covenant, which is the seed of God that's released, of the man within. And then you've got Omicron, Sigma, which is Sheen. If you go look at it, the Greek letter Sigma is Sheen. And it's it's the fire or the passion of the mind within, the I-N, Omicron. Within yourself, meaning you're casting a seed, you have the power of God within yourself. This isn't two joined together. This is the male-female aspect of humanity within yourself. Emphatic. So let's read this again. Through him? No. It says, through yourself, everything comes into being. <laughs> you are the, Look at this. We're made. Caused to become through him. And without him, it's autus again, guys. Nothing has been made. In him was life. Um, in you. The seed that casts within yourself is life, and this light is the life of man. And this light shines in the darkness. Darkness has not come overcome it. It's ought to again, guys. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. This is you have the infinite power of God within yourself. Emphatic. In him was life. We have this idea, it's a capital H. In you, it emphasizes within yourself is life <laughs> there came a man man needs to be male and be able to cast seed from god his name was john oh self within yourself the nature of yohanan name is yohanan Na name is kaleo the nature from within yourself guys i'm just trying to show you what's here don't get mad at me this man is from god this is the this is a godly man is to be able to be to be male and, and cast seed within yourself. The nature of Johanan is within is in yourself. Oh boy. All right. Now, if you want to do a really interesting Bible study about, I'm telling you, these are two covenants. First seed's physical, the one's the other one's spiritual, which both carry the strength of the ox or God himself. It's unlimited power, guys. All right. And this this nature is within yourself, this Johanan. Go look up Johanan if you want to see what it means in Hebrew. All right. Now, if you want to do a Bible study, they'll go look at how many times that that autus, 5,606 times, I think it said, um, shows up. And it'll show up in very interesting places, just like a left off, which your Bible says is untranslatable, shows up in very interesting places where we've created sin out of something that was never there. This idea of sin was a fourth century mistranslation of the Latins. It, it was completely made up by mistranslation. Because it said man was cast out of the garden. Oh, except there's three left tops in that verse, as I showed you. It says, and there was a casting out of a seed of the finished work of the covenant in the garden. Man was not cast out. There was something cast out of man, the seed. <laughs> Untranslatable. Well, that translation uh, makes all the difference in the world. I'm trying to show people that scripture is a thousand times better than what you were taught. It is celebrating the power of God within you. Now, where does this two? It's Christmas time coming up, guys. I want to show you one place, and then we'll finish. And I really, Barbara, I've held this for several years, guys, where I've seen this, and and I'm really, I'm really trying to express it in a way not to take anything from you, but to just show how powerful the scriptures actually are about you. Now, let's read Matthew two, the pilgrimage of the Magi. <laughs> you'll never, you'll never see this the same again, guys. So we have three kings. You got to understand what. The kingdom of God is number three is it's the gamel. It's the, the camels. We have these images of camels. You got to understand it's the third Hebrew letter, gamel, camel. Um, it's not about three, three kings cruising over to Bethlehem, which is the bread within yourself. It's not about that. But let's just read it in English and I'll show you something very, very interesting. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem. Asking, where is the one who's been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. Uh oh, where we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. We saw a two within ourself, a star in the east and have come to worship self. There's no capital H's in either of those guys. So let's go look at this verse in the interlinear. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Saying. So there is a word. This is a verb, guys. So there. this is speaking. 
who, as Jin Ho, you will perceive Omicron, you will you will perceive the the birth of the kingdom of Laodun. It's really interesting. <clears throat> we saw four of him, the star in the east. Well, this hymn is Atu, and are come to worship Atu. So we saw, let's look at this first. To see, perceive, attend to. Oreo. Now I want to see this. To see with meta metaphorical meaning. To see with the mind. To spiritually see. Perceive with inward spiritual perception. Guys, I'm trying to show you what this is actually saying. This is not a story about three kings with camels coming to a, a town in Israel. This is happening within yourself. And it's more beautiful when you understand what it actually says, what I'm trying to show you versus what you were told it says. It says, when you do this, when you, when guys, God is unlimited. Nothing can stop God. So when you cast the seed within yourself, what you see, what you perceive within. Okay. That's what areo means. Perceive, attend. It means to see with the mind, spiritually see. Okay. We see with the mind, gar, within yourself. Self, autus. Self, emphatic. And it's the left tough. It's the upsilon, the man within. It's the passion of the seed of the man within yourself. It's, it's creating from within yourself. The star in the east. Let's go look at what east is, first of all. So how does the seed of man cast up? There's something that rises up. Rising of the sun. Hence, the quarter whence the sun rises in the east. From Anatello, a rising. If you go look at this, guys. To make to rise, to rise, to shine. <laughs> to come up and complete a process. Telios, where we get telos. To properly rise up and complete the process is east. And you've got this story of three guys coming from someplace in the east. You can't get pastors to, well, like, we think they're from this country. And we think there's, guys, this, come on. This is rising up and completing the process where? Within yourself. So what is the star? Star. All right. Oh, interesting. The strength of the ox, right? A, a left. <clears throat> But this is pretty interesting. From the base of Stronumai. To string out, to cast, is really like he cast the stars with his hands, right? The strength of his, the finished works. Really. But it means to spread, to make a bed. If you go look at this, this is very fascinating. To spread, cast out with couches or divans. Divans are these to lay, lay down there and recline. To make, or, to make or furnish the bed. Or simpler, stronu'u, prolongation from a still simpler, stro'o, from stereos, akin to stereos. <laughs> All right. Properly, solid, firm. You getting this, guys? This is why it's called the tree. To be firm, to be solid, to be hard and rigid. <laughs> Stiff. I'm just showing you with there, guys. I, I have to laugh because it's comical to me to listen to pastors teach some of this stuff. You'll never look at the Star of Bethlehem ever again. Oh, little Star of Bethlehem, the same. You'll, you'll never, because it's not what it's talking about. So here's literally what it says. <laughs> there is a rising up and completing of the process of the stiffness within yourself. This is the physical creation of God within yourself, guys. So let's finish with this. I'm just going to look at all those all twos. This is, they came to worship him. And this came to pro. Proskunai, this is really interesting. Obeisance to worship. Pros means face to face. To kiss face to face. This is a kissing pros face to face. Worship within yourself. Emphatic. This is the kiss within yourself. Emphatic. Everybody knows what auto means except for the Latin and, and, and English translators for some reason. Probably because it didn't fit their narrative separation. But this is talking about the strength of God emphatically within yourself. Autus, a left top that's untranslatable in Hebrew, rarely correctly translated in, in Greek. And I want to show you one other thing about this autus. <clears throat> All right. It is used by the biblical writings, both in the Old Testament and New Testament, far more frequently than any other pronoun. And this very frequent and almost inordinate use of it deviates greatly from secular authors. Let me just paraphrase this. This word is used so much that nobody writes or talks like this. It's inordinate how often autus is used, which is within yourself. So just to show you what is inordinate. So here's what it's saying. This word 
let's use Merriam-Webster, exceeding any reasonable limit, meaning, guys, there's something else going on. This isn't even reasonable how often this, this word ought to shows up. Inordinately, adverb inordinateness. All right, so that's uh, that's Merriam-Webster. <clears throat> uh, we go down here. It's inordinate, uh, exceeding amount, excessive. It's fascinating. So inordinate means exceeding any reasonable limits. <laughs> so let's go look at this again, right? Autus. So <clears throat> let's, let's look at this again. There is a rising up and completing of the process <clears throat> of the <clears throat> of spreading a bed, casting out from the firmness of the, the bed within myself, guys. And this self is all over the place, just like left top is all over the place. This is the central core of all scripture. It is used in the Old Testament, New Testament, far more frequently than any other pronoun. It is very frequent, almost inordinate use of it that deviates greatly from secular authors, meaning nobody speaks like this, guys. Nobody wrote like this at the time. They are trying to get a point across, just like a left top is used 11,050 times, never translated into English. So we've translated as no or not, the, the being male within yourself, the rising up and completing of a process within yourself, which is the kingdom of God, which is the unlimited power of God, which you possess within yourself. That's what it's trying to show you. There's nothing wrong with you. There never has been. It's talking about the creative ability of God in man, which is unlimited. Trying to have a problem is trying to be limited. It's trying to be who you're not. So you don't perceive the problem. You simply see how you want life to be. You relax. And I simply see everything in perfection and realize I've just released the infinite power of God that nothing can stop. And every atom in the universe moved to fulfill that thought. Exactly what everybody else is saying in scripture and all the scientists and all the the spiritual masters are all saying the same thing. You are a divinely creative being. Hope that helps you guys. God bless.